Summer, generally not the season to talk about migratory birds. That's usually in the fall and the spring. Summer, though, is an important season for birders. It's when they go about trying to count and track those birds. And it's how we learn about them, like their travel patterns and how old they are, for example. Like when we learned Idaho was home, at least part of the time, to one of the longest living black headed gross beaks ever recorded. Something some Boise State birders discovered in the summer of 2022, and we told you about last December. So why are we showing you this again? It'll all make sense in a moment. For nearly 30 years, the Intermountain Bird Observatory has been, well, observing birds around Boise with the goal being conservation. So it's sort of the finger on the pulse. We can get an idea of, you know, how are these common species doing? Are they sustaining their populations? Are they declining? And if they're declining, is there anything we can do about it? To do that, it helps to know how many you have. So since 1997, the observatory spends every summer and fall three months at Lucky Peak banding songbirds. Just a little lightweight aluminum band around their leg. And that lets us count how many birds have come through our station. And it gives us a really good idea of sort of the ages of the birds that are coming through. And that allows us to track population trends over time. Time is why we're telling you this story. And it takes us back to July of 2008 when Heidi was new to the observatory. Yeah, it really was. It was like my first month ever bird banding. She would help catch them, band them, and snap a picture of them. And so we caught this gross beak. He was a one-year-old. He was probably nesting for the first time. Yeah, and you can see his little brown wing feathers. So that's when he was a little baby. At the time, a pretty common catch. We banned, you know, about 60 gross beaks a year and thousands and thousands of other birds. But this gross beak, would garner another look. We re-caught him in 2010, which having a bird that's three, four years old, that's not that remarkable. Neither is not seeing the same bird more than twice. Yeah, we assume a lot of our birds probably live four or five years and then we don't see them again and we assume like, all right, they lived their life, they had some babies, great. And if that were the last we heard of that gross beak, then this story would be pretty unremarkable too. But jump ahead a dozen years to the summer of 2022. The crew caught a gross beak who was already banded. They wrote down his number, took his picture, and let him go. Then a few weeks ago, while putting this summer's band numbers into the database, Heidi saw it. Whoa, that's a really old band number. Where did this bird come from? But Heidi knew. I actually recognize, so 1991 is like a sequence that I remember because it was the first year that I was banding songbirds up there. She also remembers it for another reason. You see, that first photo from that first year, that gross beak was biting and being held by her future husband, Jay. But it was only the fourth day I'd ever met him before, so. So it took a while for the bird lovers to become lovebirds themselves. Another eight years to start dating, another two years to get married. Now they have a toddler with another on the way. Yeah. <laughs> So this gross beak has been at Lucky Peak and at our station for as long as I have, which is cool. Oh, right, back to the gross beak. First banded in 2008, still alive in 2022. That means this bird would be... 15 years and plus or minus a couple months. Is that normal? It's the world record, as far as we know, for black-headed gross beaks. So it's the longest lived of his species that's ever been recorded before. They cross-checked that record on the Bird Banding Laboratory, who keeps track of longevity records. And sure enough... Before this was a black-headed gross beak that was 11 years old, and he was caught in 2005 in Montana. Now this guy's the new record. That number of years, though, pales in comparison to the number of miles this ancient gross beak has likely gone in his yearly migration to Mexico. We added up, we think minimum, he had to have gone 30 or 45,000 miles in his life so far. A life that is not only a test of time, but a testament to the work of the Intermountain Bird Observatory. It's only because of that band number that we're able to actually say, wow, this guy's really old, old grandpa, gross beak. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, it gives us this sense of pride of, wow, like we're protecting this habitat and getting really good data about these species. Um, and it's, yeah, it's all working out. So yeah, it's pretty cool to see. I'm guessing this next spring, you're gonna be looking for them. Yes. <laughs> 
Phoebe now has a five and a half half month old, uh, or excuse me, Heidi does, whose name is Phoebe. So congratulations to them. Okay, so that bird isn't the only remarkable return for the Intermountain Bird Observatory. They held a monitoring session last week near Idaho City looking for hummingbirds. So here's how that works. There's a trapping group and a banding group, which are pretty self-explanatory. They trap, they trap, the trapping group traps the tiny birds. They put them in these soft little mesh bags and they're taken to the banding group by what they call runners. The banders get excited when they see an aluminum band already on a bird. And it means they can record a return, but it also because, well, they could be from anywhere, so they don't know where. They read the numbers to the data recorders. So Heather Hayes was banding last week, hoping to see some baby birds come through when a runner handed her a calliope already banded. When I started to read the number, the letter that precedes the number was the letter P. And we haven't seen the letter P in our banding for many years. Huh. So all of us started holding our breath. And when the data recorder entered in the number, we realized that this girl was a whopping 10 years old. And we had originally banded her in 2014. So these guys breed in the inland Northwest but they overwinter in Southern Mexico. And so that's roughly like not knowing exactly where the bird goes about 2000 miles one way. So when you do the math on a 10 year old hummingbird and to think about all what they have to go through to make that migration, it is absolutely incredible. So let's do the math, 1000 miles, 2000 miles one way, 4000 miles round trip, 10 years, that's at least 40,000, right? Not bad for the smallest long distance migrating bird species in the world. And that doesn't even account for the several miles they travel around the area just eating from people's backyard feeders. Heather tells us they first banded this little lady in 2014 when she was already an adult. So she could be a lot more than 10 years old. They just don't know. And then they recorded her again in 2015 and 2017. That's the cool part. Idaho has the highest density of calliope hummingbirds, we're told. So the chances of them catching her four times, that's pretty rare.